hello everyone so in the previous class we have discussed about introduction to the animal behavior and the types of behavior shown by different organisms and the different types of migration pattern in different animals so today mainly we'll focus on the types of migration in birds and types of migration in fishes so migration in birds usually the birds migrate from one place to another place in search of food and they come back so it may be a seasonal non seasonal to get the advantage of the favorable conditions so it may be a traditional or it may be hereditary so once the it also takes place in definite interval of time every year so usually the birds what happens they migrate from one southern pole to northern pole northern pole to southern pole so due to the favorable condition for breeding food and shelter so in order to secure optimum condition for as we have discussed about breeding and feeding so what happens they utilize these these niche in both the hemisphere and utilize the protected nesting place year after year so next or 5 billion land birds are on under that 187 species of migratory birds they move from europe to africa africa to asia so every year the bird migration is happening due to the seasonal change or due to the hormonal triggering so usually the bird migrate from one place to another place due to the different types of behavior seen in birds so next we'll see about migratory status so usually the bird which migrate we call them as migrant so under migratory status we are having four different types so the first one is winter visitors so these birds what they do they move from northern pole to southern pole and southern pole to the northern pole so usually these bird species they include or they move from breeding ground to spend their winter in more suitable places so where food is plenty example the field fare snow bunting usually they visit during winter and also you can see these birds in bharatpur national park in india so the second migratory status is the summer visitor so what happens during summer then so once the spring starts the south starts to getting hot so due to this summer the birds they tend to move towards the northern condition or north hemisphere then these birds leave south once the spring is started and from northern to spend their summer so once the north gets cold again they tend to move towards the south so during autumn they go towards the south and during summer they come back to the north side example swift swallows third type is the transit type or the passage migrants so usually these birds they are summer and winter visitors so what happens during migration they tend to stop at one place for the sake of rest so during the rest 
they gather food they breed and they tend to mate also so this is about the passage migrants example is cranny teals so next we are having permanent residents so usually these birds are found in particular areas throughout the year and usually they do not migrate from one place to another place example mallards cotton teal and bar headed goose so these birds they come under permanent residents these are the four different migratory status of birds so next we'll move on to types of migration so under that first one is daily migration so many birds make daily movement from their nest to their food for their gathering of their food and again come back to their shelter so usually we see in our daily life like early morning the chipping of birds because of their photoperiodism so as the light intensity is tend to start then the bird migration we can see so examples is crow sparrows starlings so that is depending on the temperature darkness and humidity so next we are having local migration so local migration so maybe due to natural calamities like heavy rains floods exclusive heat cold so what happens this bird leave their native area and they move far for some times but once the crisis is over they come back to their native place for example in forest also so during the spring season what happens the flowering plants tends to flower and the maximum amount of food will be available near to that plants so usually bird nest near to that flowering plants but once this flowering plants or the flowering is stop then the bird they tend to move towards their native nest so these type of birds they are called as local migrants third type that is seasonal migration so due to different types of responses in seasons the bird tend to move to different places for example in tropical and subtropical what happens the bird tend to move during beginning or at the end of the summer but whereas in temperate areas it is triggered during the winter so due to the seasonal changes also the bird move from one place to another place so next we are having molt migration so this type of migration mainly we see in ducks so usually the males and juveniles they this type of birds they migrate towards the northern side but in the short distance but female and the young ones they are kept in the native place for their breeding ground so this type of migration is called as molt migration and this is mainly seen in ducks so next type is the cyclic migration so cyclic migration this type of birds are seasonal but that do not takes place regularly so now example is the snowy owl in us so it comes in every 5 to 3 years so what happens for in search of lemming it is a chief food for its snowy owl so once in every 3 to 5 years it come in search of food but it is irregular okay because the migration of bird it is due to seasonal because during cold time this bird comes but it do not come every year 
it comes in three years or maybe five years so due to that we call it as cyclic migration next type we are having partial migrants so there are some birds they do not leave their native land and they are always representing their certain individuals examples finch titmouse so these are the partial migrant birds next type is irregular migration so there are some birds they move from short place to short place or to the long place in search of food and safety but this type of migration maybe it is not depending on the season but it is only depending on the food so this type of birds they are called as irregular migrants example herons and also in irregular migration due to the natural calamities also the bird tend to move from short distance to long distance next type we are having altitudinal migration so as we move from mean sea level to the higher peaks there is a climatic variation or the temperature variations so there are some birds they tend to move up during summer or they tend to move down during winter because of harsh climatic condition so example coots violet green swallows himalayan white caped red stars so these all birds what they do during summer condition the land will be heated up they tend to move towards the peaks but during winter the peaks will be colder they tend to move towards the lower ground portion so this type of migrants they are called as altitudinal migrations or migrants so next we are having equatorial migration so in equatorial migration the bird they tend to move from south to north or north to south example are cuckoos and strokes so usually what they do the birds they tend to move from large number in eurasians and north american across the equator so this type of migrants they are called as latitudinal or equatorial migrants so next one we are having longitudinal migration they move from east to west example are grosbeaks and starlings so these are the different types of migration seen in birds next we'll move on to diurnal and nocturnal migration so due to the different types of photoperiodism there we can see the type of migration so the first one is night filters so usually under night filters the birds are very small so usually they prefer darkness for migration because to get the protection from large predatory birds examples sparrows titmice woodpeckers second type they are day filters so the birds they prepare to migrate from one place to another place during day time example swallows pigeons robins so there are some few birds they tend to migrate from one place to another place during day time and night time 
so the birds examples are geese and ducks so these are some of the examples and these are some of the data of emperor pigeon so usually the largest or the longest range of migration is around 17600 kilometers which is done by arctic tern they are moving from one edge to the another edge so these are some of the datas so next we'll move on to advantages of migration so why migration is required so till now we have discussed to get rid of unfavorable condition in search of food or maybe to follow their genetical pattern and always to know different types of habitats and it also helps in evolutionary aspects so these are some of the advantages so these are some of the hazards for migrations till now we have discussed maybe natural hazards and man made hazards so next we'll move on to the fish migration so under migration in fish usually the movement of fishes that takes place from one habitat to other habitat for the purpose of feeding spawning breeding or shelter so this is called as fish migration so usually how we have discussed under the birds under fish migrations there are certain types so maybe even the fish also follow the regular pattern irregular pattern or due to the photoperiodism or due to different types of natural calamities occurring under the water so during tsunamis cyclones etc so these all are the aspects that affect migration of fishes so during as we have discussed daily migration annual generational so daily migration for mainly gathering of food annual migration mainly for reproduction so we know there are fishes they tend to move from fresh water to sea water or vice versa for breeding generational migration usually parent migrant to release egg and die so that is a gen generational migration okay so next we'll see the types of migration so first one is the diadromous migration so what is this diadromous migration so usually the fish migrate between sea water from fresh water so usually fishes they move from fresh water to sea water these type of fishes they are called as diadromous fishes under that we are having four types anandromous catandromous amphiandromous and semi migratory so what are these anandromous so these fishes migrate from sea to fresh water for breeding examples the atlantic salmons second type is the catandromous fishes so 
usually what these fishes are these fishes migrate from fresh water to sea water during spawning example is fresh water eel third type is amphiandromus so fishes migrate from sea water to fresh water or vice versa not for breeding usually example is gobies so these are the three types anandromus catandromus and amphiandromus another fourth one is the semi migratory usually they tend to move from sea water to estuaries and estuaries to sea water so now we'll move on to the potandromus fishes so potandromus they are mainly a uh, migratory fishes they tend to move only within the fresh water example trots and crabs next type is oceanandromus so oceanandromus they are tend to move within only in sea water or in oceans example tuna and sardine so these are the different types of migration of fishes we see in so potandromus oceanandromus so based on what purpose usually the bird sorry the fish migrate so in search of food survival suitable climatic condition and to maintain osmoregulation we know that fish lives in water and also to maintain their salt balance in their body usually the fishes undergo osmoregulation so these are some of the data about bengali delicacy okay so next we'll move on to migration of mammals so as we have seen each and every organisms they migrate but in mammals like wild beast zebra caribou elephants they move from one place to another place because of their survival so to get rid of starvation so these are the data recording to some of the mammals okay this is a good data so elephants usually they are the longest migration seen in mammals so you might have seen in karnataka also the elephants in madikeri hasan and all they tend to move towards the kabini in the summer and again they go back to their native habitat once the rainy season starts so there is a polar bear okay and also in small animals like invertebrates and all we can see different types of migration butterflies usually migrate from one place to another so there are some butterflies which tend to move from ocean so that's about the animal migration thank you